lots of tips and tricks to help your aging eyes look youthful, more lifted and light, and we're going to get into all of that right now. Hello friends, this is the look that I created today for you in this video. I don't do this makeup, the part, this part of my face on camera today, but you're gonna see everything that I put into my eyes. Now this routine is extremely in depth. I'm chalking it full of all of the tips that I've thought about and everything that I do to my eyes on a day when I'm doing a full eye makeup. Please don't feel overwhelmed by this. You can follow along with me if you want to, you know, get your makeup, follow along. That's great. But you might just want to incorporate one trick at a time, one tip at a time, and then perfect that and move on. But these tips together give your eyes a brightened look. They give your eyes a lifted look and they make them look more youthful because we're hiding all of the crepiness the wrinkles, all of those things that we get as we age and we just don't like at all. But we're going to tackle those today and get into them. Let's get into this video right now. Help for aging eyes for me has to start with brightness. I get so much darkness and so much discoloration. I'm gonna turn my light down really quick. Look at this, you guys. It is so dark. I have a little viewfinder right there. That's why I'm looking to the, to the side. But what else is important is that I have all the crepiness and all of the horrible um, crinkling, troughs, whatever you want to call them, crow's feet, whatever you want to call them. And that's where my Suko Yaka Suhada Urea Moisture Cream comes in for eyes. And I use a generous amount of this. I've already done my moisturizer once today, but I'm going to use another amount of it and I'm going to really slather this in because if you slather it in and just let it sit there, you can do it once or you can do it twice if you want to. I like to do it twice. Um, that's when I find I get my best look. So that's going to plump that area up a ton. And that's really that dryness, that crepiness is really what can age us really quick and make our eyes look really old. And the second thing, like I said, is brightness. So I'm starting out with this Flower Beauty Eye Brightener Pencil. This is kind of a bone color and I'm going to put that in my waterline. And that helps because I used to put black in there, but as I aged, I found that it just was really dark and really kind of made my eyes look a little bit more closed off. But this helps so much with that redness and darkness that I get in on my waterline and it really does help bring my eyes to life, just that little bit. Now, the next thing is to find a really good eyeshadow primer that takes care of all the darkness on the top. You guys have heard me talk a million times about Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is a little deluxe sample of it, and I just really love this. It does its job perfectly in making the eyeshadow cling and then also creating a barrier between that moisture that you just did and the um, eyeshadow that you're gonna have on. If you get too much of this, you might find that your eyeshadow will crease, so be careful of that. The other thing that I want you to do is be real cognizant about bringing it into the inner eye right there or right into this cavern because that's where we see so much discoloration and you really want to take care of the whole entire eye. One step that I should have said before eyeshadow primer is if you have too much of your uh, lotion on or your cream on for your eyes then you can really just pat it with a tissue and that's what I'm going to do underneath because I do feel like I sometimes get too much makeup under there and part of that can be too much moisture. I know it's such a delicate balance between my eyes look very dry under there, but at the same time, I don't want my concealer to move around. All right, the next step is the Pixie by Petra. This is the under eye corrector in peach, brightening peach. And I'm gonna take a good amount of it and I'm going to just put it underneath my eyes right here. And I'm not using a ton, even though it looked like a ton. So I put my finger down in there one time and I'm not gonna dip down in there again for under my eyes. Now you can already see that all of this area has just been completely brightened up. I mean, I've done the waterline, the eyelid, and now the under eyes, and we've completely brightened it up. We have more of kind of a white look going on now. Now we can start into eyeshadow. I take this little, what's supposed to be like a highlighting brush that I got from BK Beauty. I go into any sort of a powder, and I'm just gonna, because I have this Wet n Wild palette out, I thought I was gonna use it today, but I'm just gonna take the bone color in here. 
um, they usually have a really nice bone color with wet and wild and i'm just going to go across the eyeshadow primer because i don't want it to crease i talked in a very recent tutorial about the sephora lineup makeup tape let me grab this it looks like this comes like this and it just is it's my saving grace because of my shaky hands and because of my disability, but it just helps me make a crisper line. And since I can't do a wing because of my shaky lines and because I have this little fold down thing right here from gravity, <laughs> I have to do something like this that helps me kind of fake a, a winged liner. I'm going to take it about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom lash line and then i'm going to point it towards the tail of the eyebrow now it might take you a couple times to get used to that and to get the right um angle that you want to go for because you don't want it to go down too far because you don't want your eye look to pull your eye down but you don't want it to go too high because then it really disrupts that what i was talking about about that little fold okay we're going to use a fluffy brush, I believe this is the Lexi 213 or 231. I'll make sure I put it down below in the description box. And I'm going to be using today the Old Wet n Wild Petalette Palette. I love this palette. I'm going to dip down into what they call the transition color. So ahead of their time. So transition, crease, lid, and brow bone. They just did it really good okay so i'm not going to get crazy with this hold your brush this is another tip i feel like too many people hold their brushes up this way you want to hold your brush at the midpoint of the ferrule or the handle and use a light touch and i do mean light touch so i'm going to start out here because where you touch the first time is going to be where most of your eyeshadow deposits and then i'm just going to lightly trail it in following the arch of my eye. It just helps so much. And because I want this look to be a little bit lighter, again, I'm using a very light touch. I'm also not doing windshield wiper motions. Why? Because my eye moves. I'm not like a young person. If I do windshield wiper motions, I'm going to get a skipping. I'm going to get something there that I don't want. So using these little stippling or, you know, just kind of back and forth really softly where you're kind of bouncing your brush. It's more of a stippling action, I guess, with a little bit of a push. Stipple push. Yeah, we'll call it that. You guys can see this one probably a little bit better. We're going to just stipple and push the color over. And again, can you see how subtle that is, how light it is, how I'm trying really hard not to get too much shadow on there. I am dipping down a couple of times, but once I get what I want on there, don't go down in your shadow again. And then just follow your natural arch of your eye. And this color needs to be a little bit um, lighter because we don't want to take away that valuable real estate. Now, if you have hooded eyes where they really come down a lot, this is where you're going to be creating your crease, your transition, everything. Next thing I'm doing is I'm going to lay down the lid color. I'm going to put it on my finger. A lot of people decide to use a brush here. Go right ahead, do whatever you want to. And I pick up quite a bit because what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to very, very lightly spray my finger with setting spray. Mine has to be on the finger. It gives me more control, I feel like. And it lays down a little bit better. It just is really pretty. Again, pick up quite a bit and then lightly spray the finger. Make sure you're bringing it all the way down into the inner corner of the eye. It just helps me to get a little bit more precision when I'm using my finger. I don't want this eye look to get too dark. So instead of using that dark, dark color from Petalette, I'm gonna switch over to Sweet as Candy and I'm going to use actually their transition color. I'm gonna take a Morphe E18 and it's gonna go down into the crease color. It's very dense and it's very short. And I like that because I can be more precision. I do have that shake in my hands, you guys, so you are going to see some shaking today, and I apologize, but I get that loaded up. I'm going to just lightly tap it off, and then I'm going to go right down in here into that corner, and that's where I want all of that darker color laid down. I'm going to bring it up into my crease, and I'm going to bring it up above the crease bone right there on the outer corner. This is how I get my outer V. I am working with the tape to where it's going to bump up against the tape 
and then I'm coming down onto the lid in the corner here. Once you have as much of that as you want deposited, I want you to switch over to a more fluffy brush without any color on it. I'm gonna go in with a 228 brush from Luxie. It's a really fluffy blending brush, and I'm just going to blend this and pull it over a bit and just really pay attention to the blending. This is the part that will probably take you the longest on your eye. I'm pulling it out. I'm buffing it into the crease color. I'm buffing it over into the lid color a little bit, and I'm just continuing to buff and pull it out without going up here by the eyebrow where we're going to leave a little bit of light up there. This is a Sigma E30 pencil brush. I'm going to go down into the bone color in the Sweet as Candy. I'm going to just lightly go across up here by my eyebrow. Grab that Luxie brush that I was buffing everything with and buff that together. Now take the tape off and you can see that line right there and how nice that is and how much it helps to define our eyes instead of having that eyeshadow coming pulling our eye down. Okay, before I go and do the rest of my makeup, I put my foundation on. This is the foundation that I'm testing. It'll come up in another video. It's the KVD Good Apple Foundation. I'm going to use my sponge. I'm going to dip into there one time, maybe two really light times, and I'm going to do my under eyes. The reason that I'm in love with this is it becomes the same color as my foundation, and it is so good for covering this area. I just have been really, really liking it for my aging eyes. Now, because we have to have that set down because it's a little bit more emollient, you either have to choose a powder or setting spray or both. I actually, right now, while my skin is normal, I choose both, but in very, very light layers, and it seems to work really well. So I'm gonna take my Dampen Beauty sponge and I'm gonna go into the Milani Prep Set and Glow, and I'm using a very tiny amount, and not only am I using a tiny amount, but I'm barely, barely going in there and just putting a tiny bit of powder in there. So again, just barely touching in there. Now get your setting spray. I'm choosing to use the Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Serum from Catrice. Spray it once, really lightly, and remember you might have to dot it a little bit on your hand to get it excess off. And then again, just do the same exact thing as you just did with the powder. It's really light, and what's beautiful about this glow powder is it doesn't have a ton of glow in it, but it will set that area down, and it's gonna make it look beautiful. I love that technique, where you're just using super duper light layers of the two. And your pencil brush again, I'm gonna do the inner corner with the brow color that is in the petalette. You don't have to go between palettes, but I love both of these palettes for different reasons, and they just make everything look so light and airy and pretty, and yeah, they're very good quality. My eyebrows are the bane of my existence, but since I love you guys so much, I am going to show you my tips for eyebrows to help aging eyes. So I always, of course, you know, just brush what hair you have. I don't have a lot. I have a little bit, but I don't have a lot. I'm using the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil, and I think mine is in tow. First thing, don't ever bring your eye, your eyebrow down. Wherever the natural line of it is, draw right up in there. Even draw further up in there and see if you can't just get it to look like it's lifted, you know, just from your natural hair. So you're not gonna wanna bring that eyebrow down at all. I don't care if your both of your eyebrows are uneven, you are gonna just want to, you know, go as high as you can because that brings up your eye and if you went down below where your natural brow is, it's gonna bring it down. So that already, just right there, you can see how it lifted because I'm defining. Now I'm gonna try and do that on this eye too. Doing a little bit of painting in right here inside. And then I'm gonna go right underneath it. And this eye is a little bit lower, so I'm gonna go as high as I can. This eye has no tail. So I do have to bring that tail out and make a fake tail there. Now, you don't want your eyebrows to be too far apart because that makes you look like you're surprised. You don't want them to be too much together because that makes you look like you're angry. So you just want to paint this in, this little inside part. Paint it in just a little bit, right about where the bulb of your nose is to that part, and it should be just fine. And then I'm going to thicken up the top part of it. That's really important because if your brow's thicker, it gives your eyes a more youthful appearance. And so I am painting on top of them 
where my hair is yes but i'm gonna just very lightly do a little bit more up there too and then i'm gonna try and make this part right here where my natural arch is i'm gonna try and make it a little bit more defined and then i'm gonna take the essence make me brow and i'm just going to use that to set them and what's nice about this is it is a little bit of a pomade so it's going to darken them just a little bit more and it's going to keep them in place okay going to do the other one i'll be right back all right just remember those two things about eyebrows don't bring them down under you know underneath the hair that you normally have go up as high as you can and then make them a little bit thicker with just a tiny bit of a point right there at your natural arch so those tips will really help you a lot as far as lifting the eye and making it look more youthful okay so now you have a couple options you can either go with a very neutral looking eyeliner if you want to no eye eyeliner if you don't want to um, nothing underneath the eyes lots of people are going for that but I find that defining just a little bit of my eye helps not only to pull it up but it helps it to look more youthful because it disguises some of this um, darkness and crinkling right here so today I am going to use the Milani this is the stay put eyeliner and this one I think is in sapphire so I'm going to take this pencil and I'm just going to use about a quarter inch and bring it right there underneath the eye quarter inch in then i'm going to take the pencil brush that i used again i'm going to just go ahead and clean it off and i'm going to go right in there without any powder or anything and i'm just going to smudge it and i'm going to pay attention to pulling it up towards the eye and just bringing it in a little bit this helps me incorporate a tiny bit of color without like going full-blown blue eyeshadow look now i want to set that down the best way to do that is two ways the first one is that you're going to take a blue eyeshadow and you're just going to barely dip into it so that that very point of that pencil brush is there and then go on top of it and the cream with the eyeliner and then the powder with the eyeshadow is going to help set the two together brought it about two-thirds of the way in i guess somewhere about that but i'm not bringing it all the way in so as to keep this part of the eye really open and then i'm going to do the other eye to make that eyeshadow and your mascara stay without having any drips or any you know smudging down there during the day i'm going to give you another tip I just happen to have this compact it's what i'm using been using the whole time we've been talking but this is a finishing powder from cover fx that's in the middle of this face palette i love this face palette i'll make sure i link it i got mine for half off which was a really good deal because cover fx isn't really very affordable but take a fluffy brush dip it into that finishing powder now i want you to ever so lightly go across as close as you can because you don't want a bunch of powder down here in your concealer go across that blue color and across all of those bottom lashes very very lightly now in sticking with that pretty blue color that we have going on i'm going to take my color pop bff this is in the color crazy c-r-z-y and it's just a felt tip liner and i'm going to be using it to line my upper lash line i'm going to tight line as tight as i can but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put a little curl in my eyelashes i think that is really important to make your eyes look more youth youthful and i'm just gonna you know just put one or two curls in there and then i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna do the liner and you guys know i love you when i do my liner and my eyebrows showing you guys because it is so hard for me to do this and control my hands so i go pretty darn fast i just put it in there in the inner corner and i pull it across pretty darn fast now what i want to say to you is i stop before i get about a third of an inch or a quarter of an inch away from over there because if i were to pull this down with this liner it's going to pull my whole look down i'm going to go in with a volumizing mascara my favorite one is the essence lash princess waterproof i love this brush i love what it does for volume and i'm going to go in here and i'm going to wiggle i have a natural wiggle because my hands shake i'm going to wiggle and then i'm going to just really concentrate at the base of those lashes this one gives me tons of volume i love this mascara for volume but i can't go in here and spend a lot of time because this mascara its formula will clump just a little bit if i'm not careful and I, if i keep going so i go in there and i get the actual volume that i want from this one and then i switch over to another one which is my elf lash it loud 
and I love this one for length. So I'm going to tip my eyelashes with this one. And this one's going to give me my length. The other one gave me all of the good feels for volume. And yeah, we're just going in with length on this one. So I'm concentrating on the tips and you can see the amount of volume and length that gave definition. These two mascaras together are so good. All right, gonna do this other eye and I'll be right back with you. All right, friends, there's the finished look, a video chock full of all of my secrets to help aging eyes and to make your eyes look more youthful. I hope that you did enjoy this. Thanks so much for watching today. Weigh in down below on what you guys think of this look. And if there are any tips or tricks in here that you are going to incorporate, and if there are any that I need to know about that you like to do, I'd love to hear that too. Thanks guys so much for spending a part of your day with me and hanging with me. I love you very much and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye friends.